Hello, everybody, and welcome to assignment number four, contrast animations. So as you can see behind me, this beautiful animation, um, a very early animation created between 1950 and 1955 by the artist filmmaker James Whitney. So what's really interesting uh, about this particular animation is that it was made all by hand. So this is pre-computer era. Um, James and his brother John Whitney went on to develop um, computers and early analog techniques to create animations and um, I recommend that you watch some of these um, Whitney Brothers animations because they're absolutely stunning um, and they also demonstrate a collaboration between movement and music which is um, really uh, just um, gold to the eyes um, so Looking at this uh, James Whitney animation behind me, um, he, he made it all by hand. So essentially he used these five by seven inch um, paper cards and he poked uh, grid patterns into the um, card and then beneath the, um, the card with the, with the holes punched, uh, he had uh, painted um, colored cards. So this allowed him to move the foreground card on top and have a color beneath. And um, as you watch the animation, there's um, various patterns and shapes um, that uh, happened throughout the animation video. So he was changing the color in the background and changing the grid patterns on the foreground and building out um, a really beautiful early animation. So for our project, Contrast Animations, we will be taking a cue from John and James Whitney's early animations by making industrious and innovative moving pictures using very simple materials such as bristol board, acrylic paint, and an X-Acto knife or scissors to cut out the bristol. So if you navigate Canvas to the modules section, you will find assignment number four, contrast animations. And I've broken up the project into three parts, cold and warm, light and dark, and finally simultaneous contrast. You will make a total of five animations. You will make two cold and warm animations. You will make two light and dark animations, and finally, one simultaneous contrast animation. So a total of five. So when you're making your um, one of your animations, what you will do is cut a piece of 11 by 14 inch Bristol in half, which will give you two 11 by seven inch pieces of Bristol to paint and then cut out one of them. One will be your background and one will be the movable foregrounding shape. So in my example here, I have a cold and warm animation. I have a lemon yellow background sheet and then on top my shaped cutout is uh, cadmium red tinted with white. So I can move the cadmium red tinted shape on top of my lemon yellow cold temperatured background now what's important here is you want to take the time to um, mix up enough color to get a nice even opaque um, coverage on each uh, sheet of bristol that you're painting let it dry um, keep things nice and clean and when you're cutting out your shape don't be too hasty Think about what would be an interesting um, form to move on top of the background. Um, all of this counts in the clarity of the animation and how um, the color will translate um, on video um, as it's moving for the viewer to watch. So you will want to set up a tripod for your camera or your um, smartphone to capture the moving image and um, I would experiment with the motion of the foregrounding object and try to get at least a 5 to 15 second clip that feels um, smooth and satisfying um, 
for you and then thus for the viewer to watch. So editing the animation, simply take your clip, uh, open it in QuickTime and you can trim the clip down to whichever section feels the smoothest and strongest. Um, if you have a 30 to 40 second clip, you can just edit it down to 5 to 15 seconds. And when you're watching the clip, you can just select loop to play the um, to play your animation over and over. So that five seconds will turn into an eternity. 